Today on the bench, we have a Lester E-Series SCR battery charger. It's a 48 volt charger uh, set for wet cell, rated at 17 amps. And it's a model 26070. And the guy that had this charger just said it quit, it quit charging. So I just thought we'd take a quick look at it, see what we can find out. Just set this cover to the side. When we look inside the charger, we do see some SCRs in the back. They have soldered on the, the terminals, at least for the anode and the cathode. The, the actual gate is just a push on female terminal. But our transformer, none of the connections on our transformer look bad or corroded. They've been heat shrink well. Just rocking them back and forth. They don't feel loose under there. Nothing with the transformer as far as corrosion or um, looking like it's been overheated at all. I'm going to take the boards off so we can take a little closer look at them. So that's our relay board. Our AC power is coming in through our cord. It comes up through a resettable circuit breaker. It comes to this board. What it looks like we sense them with this board, maybe the 48 volts. I'll get a schematic up and we take a look and verify that. It looks like it's sensing the 48 volts coming from this cable, which I, I do have the connector off. It's on the replacement charger that the guy's using. I have marked this as plus and minus because sometimes it can be a little bit confusing because our plus here on the amp meter or the black lead here actually goes to the plus on our amp meter. So now I've taken this board off as well just to give it a look over. We got our jumper for dry seal versus wet seal here. And unfortunately it's going to be a disappointing video as far as taking a good look at the circuit board. Because if you can tell on camera that potting material is hard. It's not a soft silicone. These boards look like uh, they're not repairable at all. I believe you'd have a hard time getting that off the board. So very few items do you come across like that, but I guess it is sealed up good for uh, moisture and corrosion resistance, stuff of that nature, but probably a lot better for corrosion. We got a number on the back of this board. It's 27075-00. And we can tell this is where our SCR gates are coming from is this lower lower connector. The lower connector when it's mounted up sideways. Our white wire goes to the gate on one SCR. On the second one, there's a black wire that comes around and goes to this connector. So this is gonna be our control that fires the SCRs. So before I even power the charger up and try it out, I wanted to look at the boards, make sure it wasn't nothing obvious, look at the connections. I don't see anything with the connections. The corrosion and all is at a very bare minimum. It's in good shape, really. But I did want to check the SCR, so I have a meter over. Make sure you can see the display. We're reading pretty high ohms into the close to mega ohm readings here. If I go from anode to cathode, which should be good. We don't want to have continuity on the anode and cathode. Let me we'll wash it out just a little bit, get the brightness up so you can see the SCR is in here. If you can see that when I go across the gate and the anode, we get a low ohm reading. So that shows that the SCR is gating. So once again, on our second SCR, I got the meter leads hooked up to the anode and a cathode and I have it in continuity range. So it shows open. It's probably easier to see this on camera. It's showing that it's open. And if I, if I take this uh, screwdriver lead so I can connect the jumper easily, let me get a little bit of more light in there. If I can go to my, my gate and jump to the anode and we get our continuity. We get a lot lower on reading, so so I feel good about the power side. 
I have just done a quick on check just to make sure that we don't have a, a bad connection or a, a bad winding, even though it is a little bit harder to get in there with the heat shrink on it all the way to the connector. Definitely showing a winding there around one to 1 1.2 ohms. And I did the same thing on this side and got a reading. So I know the transformer is actually not open. So what it is on the output of the, um, the secondary or the output of the transformer, it actually has a center tap and one of our line comes off. Let me get that adjustment, get the balance back right. We got a blue going to one SCR and we got the purple going to the other SCR. So if we take a look at the diagram, we'll see how that's, how that's flowing from the transformer. Now I'm going to actually hook our charger up to AC power. I'm going to verify with a meter. And you have to be very careful with mains voltage, as I mentioned in, in previous videos. We can either go to ground or neutral. And I'm going to go across and I get 100 and almost 19 volts coming off the black wire to the circuit breaker. On the other side of the circuit breaker is good, it's putting out. So all the way to the board, if I back that, I'm just gonna back that terminal off just enough to, to get to it because it is an insulated terminal, which is a very good thing. And I have my 119 volts there once I make contact with it. So the reason we're not putting out right now even though we have 120 volts coming in, is this board right here is looking to make sure we have the battery connected before it puts out. So since I don't have a golf cart sitting here, I'm just gonna bring over, that's an Ego 56 volt battery, but this battery actually has a bad cell. It's one I'm uh, in the process of repairing. So it puts out roughly 48 volts but we can use it to, uh, to just signal that we're getting our relay click and 120 volts to our transformer. So if we check this battery, see what we got coming DC wise. It's almost exactly 48 volts, so it'll be a good test. And I got a 10 ounce fuse there, just in case something goes wrong. So we take our, our plus, which is our white wire coming off the charger, and we go to our plus, which is where I got my fuse going to. And then we do our minus from the battery to the minus for our charging cable. We actually hear a click, so our relay pulls in. But I'm actually not getting any output. I think I would hear it hum as well. But just in case the, the DC amp meter is bad, I'm looking at the amp meter. I know you can't see it on video. I have it tilted so you can see inside the charger right now but the amp meter's not moving. We're actually not getting our AC power. So now on this charger, all the connections, everything looks good. The SCR is checked good. I was still worried it might be something going on with this relay board. It's almost like our battery detection board to pull in the relay to let it start the input to the primary of the transformer. And even though I had 120 volts getting to the board, it didn't seem like I was getting my 120 volts out of the board. So it was almost looking like a bad relay. And of course this board as well is potted with a very dense material. It's almost looking like I might have to buy one of these boards. But however, this, this problem ended up being a lot more simple than I would originally thought. I realized that at times, especially when a load, like the, when the relay pulls in for the transformer, the problem's actually in the actual connector. Sometimes it gets power and sometimes it don't. Right now I'm holding it where it gets a better connection like that. Sometimes it doesn't. So put the meter where you can see it a little bit better. I don't know if you can hear the, the transformer cutting on and off. This is gonna be a relatively easy fix. I just need to either replace the connector or the cord itself. 
I got this real lovely bright color orange connector. But I also have a real heavy duty 14 gauge cord as well. So I think I'm just gonna put the new cord on it. Got this turned around with a little bit different view now. Take the black wire. Then a white neutral wire. And then I'll actually have to get a, um, a socket. Looks like maybe 5 16 because it's got a hex nut and it's got a bolt through for the ground. For your information, this is actually 11 32nd. It wasn't 5 16 We'll fix our new ring terminal. And since it's a non-insulated, we can use our non-insulated crimper. We actually already have the insulated terminals on this end. This is one of those molded plastic uh, inserts or um, grommets. You have to squeeze it and push it out. This one was a little bit different. It had the three tabs you had to squeeze at the same time to work it out. There we go. There we go. So now we got our brand new cord installed. We do still have our 48 volts hooked up for testing. Do a quick check. And there we go, our current's going up. Output is 54 volts. I'm only gonna run that for just a minute just to test it. Gonna cut it off. Next check is a 48 volt golf cart, the full battery set. If you found this video useful in troubleshooting for this Lester battery charger, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.